Okay, uh, we're here regarding an incident that happened on February 28th of this year uh, on 31st Avenue, is that correct? Yes. Okay, tell me what happened. Uh, my Gao 然后我继续这样大声地叫喊我不敢弯地要去捉阿Bambi 跑过来帮忙Please interpret. So just the first paragraph. Um, at around 1.40 on February 28th, as I was letting my dog Bambi out to pee, she was viciously attacked by a pit bull. The pit bull came out of nowhere and went straight for Bambi's neck. I was in complete shock as I tried to fight off the pit bull. I yelled at it, I kicked it, I kept saying no but it ignored me. I ran to my garage and got a broom to try to fight it off. I feared for my own life and screamed for help. I didn't dare to bend down to grab Bambi in fear that the people would attack my neck. After minutes of screaming helplessly, my neighbor Michelle heard us and ran over to help. When I had lost all hope, she continued to hit the people with the broom. When the owner finally showed up, he begged us not to call the police, justifying that um, she is not normally like this, referring to the people. Woman 由于他的腹部被咬伤我们最终艰难地做出了对Bambi实施安乐死的决定。At the emergency room, we were determined to save Bambi no matter the financial cost. We were told that Bambi was in critical condition, with brain injury, 
jaw fracture, pelvic fracture, calculus puncture wounds, and severe abdominal injuries, to name a few. Then we would need a minimum of four surgeries. We were told there was a high chance that she would not even survive the first surgery. And if she beat all odds and survived it at all, due to her abdominal bite wounds, um, she was at the highest risk of septic peritonitis. Even if she survived all of this, they expect her to no longer have a good quality of life. She would not be able to walk, eat, urinate, or defecate on her own and would be suffering tremendously to be alive. Our ER doctor told us if it were her dog, she would choose to let her go. We made the difficult decision to euthanize Bambi. If I know that my neighbor has a dangerous dog, I will not let my dog go close to them. If I know that my neighbor is a dangerous dog, 啊！叫佢開門，向佢求救。我們附近沒有人知道呢只狗嘅存在，而且呢只狗就住響離我家兩間屋嘅地方。我們對於知呢件事情全不知情。Had I known my long-time neighbor owned a dangerous pit bull, I would have never let my dog near the house. Had I known this neighbor owned a pit bull, I would have run to the house and banged on the door for help. Nobody in our neighborhood knew that this dog existed and that this dog lived just two doors down from us. We are completely blindsided. If you decide to own a dog, it will take care of you. These care are the dog. 为什么呢只狗冇戴颈圈、冇戴皮带、冇戴口罩？袭击嘅期间，狗主去咗边度？点解冇狗主跟住呢只狗 ？Michelle 同埋我尖叫咗几分钟求救。点解狗主要咁长时间先至出嚟阻止佢嘅狗？或者呢只狗嘅主人认为佢嘅狗有温柔同埋可爱嘅一面？但係我所看到嘅係一隻惡毒嘅比特犬殺死了我的狗。無論我哋如何嘅尖叫，如何嘅打佢同埋踢佢，佢都沒有半點嘅退縮。佢嘅眼睛一直瞪住佢嘅獵物 Bambi， 就當 Bambi 係一隻佢嘅玩具一樣。If you decide to own a pit bull, it comes with responsibilities. Those responsibilities include to always be in control of your dog. Why wasn't the dog wearing a collar, a leash, a muzzle? Where were the owners during the attack? My neighbor Michelle and I screamed for minutes for help. Why did it take so long for the owners to come, up, come to stop his dog? While this dog might have its gentle and loving side, all I saw was a vicious pit bull killing my dog as I helplessly watched. No matter how we screamed at it, how we hit it and kicked it, it did not let go, and its eyes were set on its prey as if Bambi was a toy. Bambi is not just a animal. It is a dog. 它是最温柔、最有愛心嘅狗，給我的家人帶來了無條件嘅、無條件嘅愛和温暖。我嘅先生同埋我將佢當成自己嘅女兒一樣咁看待。我們的大女兒 Eva 係一個聾啞人，佢患有扭攤。Bambi 係佢最好嘅朋友，亦都係佢嘅情感支柱。他們兩個形影不離。Bambi 還在生活嘅各方面幫助 Eva， 
，他係伊法嘅一對耳朵，在門鈴響起嘅時候，有任何危險嘅時候，佢提醒伊法。而家沒有了 Bambi， 伊法佢不願出門口，佢有時候更擔心自己嘅安全。因為當佢遇到事情嘅時候，佢無法尖叫同埋求救。Bambi is not just a pet. She is our baby, our family member, our child for the past six years. She is the most gentle, loving dog that has brought my family unconditional love and warmth. My husband and I view her as if Bambi was our own daughter. Our oldest daughter, who is sitting here, Eva, is deaf and mute and has cerebral palsy. Bambi was her best friend and her emotional support. Not only were they inseparable, Bambi assisted Eva in all facts of life. She was Eva's set of ears, alerting Eva when the doorbell rang. When there were any, when there was any danger, now without Bambi, Eva is scared to leave the house. She is scared for her own safety because she cannot scream for help. I have lost one of my family members. This incident has been very difficult for my family. Due to this incident, my three little brothers. 我嘅先生同埋我都要以創傷後應激障礙同埋抑鬱症作鬥爭。由於呢一隻危險嘅比特犬就住喺我隔壁，我嘅家人同埋鄰居都一直感到很不安。多謝。We lost a family member and it has rocked our family forever. My three children, my husband. And I continue to struggle with PTSD and depression from this incident. My family and my neighbors no longer feel safe with this dangerous dog roaming freely and living next door. Thank you. Thank and, you. And on behalf of the family, I submitted the English translation of the, uh, the her statement. And I did review that. Thank you. If you would just provide another copy to the clerk just to make sure we got the right information. I do have a couple of questions. Uh, first of all, I'm very sorry for your loss. I know how painful and traumatic these situations can be. Mm -hmm. um, how Bambi was a, a Pomeranian, is that right? Yes, she is. OK. Um, was she spayed? Uh, no. No. And how much did she weigh? Eighteen pounds. And um, normally at these hearings, uh, we play the evidence, we play the videos and the photographs. Would that be too traumatic for you to see today? I've reviewed it privately, but uh, normally we play that because it's a matter of public interest. They are okay with playing it without their presence. They would like to step out of the hearing temporarily. Okay, let's do that. Thank you for your time. Anyone who doesn't want to see this video, please step out, um, and we're going to play it. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. um, they want to see when you will play the video. After all, the witnesses testify, correct? Play the video then. The, the video. Uh -huh. um, it, it, um, let's just, do uh, you have a preference? It's entirely up to you, hearing officer. Let's um, just, if you want to play it after all the witnesses, I, I can accommodate that. Um, so please call your next witness. Thank okay. you for your testimony. You go. okay. Yes, ma'am. I'd like to call Michelle Sung, please. Hello. Good afternoon. Please state your name and spell it for the record. Sure. My name is Michelle Sung, M-I-C-H-E-L-L-E. -L -L -E. Last name is S-U-N-G. And what's your relationship with the parties here? Um, yeah, we're neighbors. I live diagonally across okay. the um, street from her. Okay. Uh, tell me what you know about this incident. Sure. 
Um, on t February 28, around 1.45 p.m., I was at home and then um, heard a high-pitched dog crying. I looked outside the window and I saw a big dog on the side of the street. So I thought a dog was hit by a car and I you know, put my shoes on and ran outside. Um, and then I realized the dog was on top of another dog and um, saw the owner hitting the pit bull with, or Bambi's owner hitting the pit bull with a broom and she was screaming and crying. Um, and I, I just jumped in and I started throwing rocks at it and just obviously trying to stop it. Um, but I also personally didn't dare to go too close, you know, knowing how dangerous a pit bull can be. Um, and after what felt like minutes, Bambi's owner just dropped the broom and she just, I think she just froze and just kept crying, my Bambi, no, my Bambi. And I, I remember yelling at her, you know, don't stop, like keep hitting, like this, this matters right now. And, and she just stood there frozen. So I picked up the broom and I continued hitting the dog thinking, you know, if I just hit hard enough, if I hit, you know, enough times, the dog will drop the, the Pomeranian. And um, I, just, I just remember Bambi staring at the mom and, you know, begging her to, to help. And there was nothing we could do. And um, yeah, the dog didn't flinch at all. It didn't acknowledge me. It didn't acknowledge anybody but had just had the eyes set on, you know, what seemed like her prey. Um, and as a dog owner, I think this dog has no social cues, no social awareness of, you know, what's, what's okay and what's not okay. Um, and I think the worst part about it is, is that I don't think it intended to kill. I think it was just enjoying killing like a game. Um, and even worse, the owners were nowhere to be found until you know minutes after the event. And I remember making eye contact with the pit bull and it was looking at me with, with you know, the big round eyes and I thought you know, if I asserted dominance and I said you know, no, like if I, if I ordered it to stop, maybe it'll, it'll like obey. And it whacked the tail and just thought it was really fun and continued pouncing at the dog. And, and there was just nothing, you know, that the two of us could have done. How did the dogs ultimately separate? The owner came out and he was able to separate the, it. The pit bull's owner? The pit bull's owner came out. Um, and about yeah. how much time elapsed, if you recall? I know it's difficult in these. It felt like forever, obviously, but I think minimum of four or five minutes. You know, I, I remember on the, on, on the phone when we were calling 911, mom said, you know, at least 10 minutes, but I think for her it was an extended period of time. I, I think it was around five minutes, give or take. Um, yeah, so we, we called 911, and um, that's I think that's when the owners came out and immediately was able to stop it. And um, then one of the first things I think he said to us was along the lines of, please don't call 911. Um, she's normally not like this. Um, this is unusual. And I just remember being baffled with that statement after having just seen, you know, what we saw when we just didn't know where the owner was during the attack. And he seemed, I think he was barefoot when he came out, super confused with the dog having even gotten out of the house. Um, and, you know, I'm a volunteer at the San Francisco SPCA, and I, I socialize a lot of dogs that are reactive and that are um, unsocialized. Um, and I, I do think that this dog you know, doesn't know how to behave around other dogs and um, presented at, in the worst case scenario without an owner, it did kill. Okay. Um, so, so after the attack, Bambi's, um, Bambi's mom just broke down and Bambi was still laying there panting and just covered in blood. And I remember yelling at her to like pick her up and run to the hospital. And we, we have a hospital or a vet office two blocks down from us. So we, we ran there. And um, they graciously took us in immediately, um, stable, tried to stabilize Bambi, but immediately told us she would need you know, critical care at a larger hospital. And I remember the vet technician being extremely upset seeing how much pain Bambi was. And I remember trying to justify to her, but you know, I think the pit bull owners were really sorry. You know, they, they came out, they were crying you know, in the moment there. 
And she looked at me and said, if they were actually sorry, then today would not have happened. And then I remember that, you know, I was like, oh, you know, just like in the moment, I think, I, I believe that the owners are not bad people. It, it was a super unfortunate event. Um, but, but the technician followed it up with owning a pit bull comes with a set of responsibilities, which the owners failed to meet that day. So I'm going to um, not consider hearsay testimony. Yeah. Hearsay evidence is when you're repeating what someone else said, and it's generally not admissible in these types of hearings. Sure. But thank you. Is there anything else that you'd like me to know? Um, yeah, just to finish it up, um, uh, let me see. Um, I think what, what was scary is that the, you know, the pit bull could have killed Bambi in one bite. You know, it, it's a very small, fragile dog. And... It, it really was like she was playing with her like like cat and mouse, you know, and it wasn't just like one fatal bite. So Bambi just died in the most cruel way possible, which which is just heartbreaking for everyone. And, and like their owners, you know, I live across the street. I have a dog myself. I didn't know a pit bull lived across the street. And had I known that, you know, had I known which house the stock came from, I would have been able, we had enough time to run around and, you know, ask for help, but we just didn't know where the stock came from at all, which which just left us with nothing, you know, with... So you had no prior interactions with the dog that lived on your block? No. Um, I think maybe I've seen the dog being walked once every six months or so, but I can't tell you which house it was from. I don't know if they lived there full time or anything like that. Um, and when my dog has been attacked by a pit bull in the past, so when I see a pit bull, you know, I'm sure there's friendly ones, but I avoid it. So we've never had any interactions besides, besides that day. Great. Thank you for your testimony. I yeah. appreciate you taking the time to be here with us today. Of course. Thank you. Officer Sutherland. Yes, ma'am. Next uh. witness.